Dumara di Limpica, Dumara Impica, born Mario Gosca, the 16th of May 1898, the 18th of March 1980, also known as Dumara di Limpica, was a Polish painter active in the 1920s and 1930s, who spent her working life in France and the United States. She is best known for her Polish Art Deco portraits of aristocrats and the wealthy, and for her highly stylized paintings of nudes. Born in Warsaw, Limpica briefly moved to St. Petersburg where she married a prominent Polish lawyer, then traveled to Paris. She studied painting with Maurice Dennis and André Lhort. Her style was a blend of late, refined cubism and the neoclassical style, particularly inspired by the work of Jean Dominique Ingalls. She was an active participant in the artistic and social life of Paris between the wars. In 1928 she became the mistress of wealthy art collector from the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Baron Raoul Kufni. After the death of his wife in 1933, the Baron married Limpica in 1934, and thereafter she became known in the press as a Baroness with a brush. Following the outbreak of World War I in 1939, she and her husband moved to the United States and she painted celebrity portraits, as well as still lifes and, in the 1960s, some abstract paintings. Her work was out of fashion after World War II, but made a comeback in the late 1960s, with the rediscovery of Art Deco. She moved to Mexico in 1974, where she died in 1980. At her request, her ashes were scattered over the Popocatapetl volcano. Korea, Warsaw and St. Petersburg, 1898-1917. She was born Maria Goska on the 16th of May 1898 in Warsaw, then part of Congress Poland. Her father was Boris Kerwigowski, a Russian Jewish attorney for a French trading company, and her mother was Malwina Deklo, a Polish socialite who had lived most of her life abroad and who met her husband at one of the European spas. At the age of 10, her mother commissioned a pastel portrait of her by a prominent local artist. She detested posing, and was dissatisfied with the finished work. She took the pastels, had her younger sister pose, and made her first portrait. In 1911 her parents sent her to a boarding school in Lausanne, Switzerland, but she was bored and she feigned illness to be permitted to leave the school. Instead, her grandmother took her on a tour of Italy, where she developed her interest in art. Her parents divorced in 1912, and her mother remarried. She returned to the school in Lausanne, but to protest the remarriage of her mother, she refused to spend her holidays with her family. Instead, she spent the summer with her wealthy aunt Stiefwe in St. Petersburg. There, in 1915, she met and fell in love with a prominent Polish lawyer, Tadu Zimpiki, 1888-1951. Her family offered him a large dowry, and they were married in 1916 in the chapel of the Knights of Malta in St. Petersburg. The Russian Revolution in November 1917 overturned their comfortable life. In December 1917, Tadeusz Zimpiki was arrested in the middle of the night by the Cheka, the secret police. Tamara searched the prisons for him, and with the help of the Swedish consul, to whom she offered her favors, she secured his release. They travelled to Copenhagen then to London and finally to Paris, where Tamara's family had also found refuge. Paris, 1918-1939 In Paris, the Impikis lived for a while from the sale of family jewels. Tadeusz proved unwilling or unable to find suitable work. Their daughter, Kizette, was born, adding to their financial needs. She decided to become a painter by the suggestion of her sister, and studied at the Académie de la Grande Chaumière with Maurice Dennis, and then with André Lhort, who was to have a greater influence on her style. Her first paintings were still lifes and portraits of her daughter Cosette and her neighbor. She sold her first paintings through the Gallery Colette Wheel, which allowed her to exhibit at the Salon des Independents, the Salon de Yorton and the Salon des Moines de Trentons, for promising young painters. Her breakthrough came in 1925, with the International Exhibition of Modern Decorative and Industrial Arts which later gave its name to the style Art Deco. She exhibited her paintings in two of the major venues, the Salon des Tuileries and the Salon des Femmes Painters. Her paintings were spotted by American journalists from Harper's Bazaar and other fashion magazines, and her name became known. In the same year, she had her first major exposition in Italy, in Milan, organized for her by Count Emmanuel Castelbarco. For this show Olympica painted 28 new works in six months. 
During her Italian tour, she took a new lover, the Marquis Somi Pismanardi. She was also invited to meet the famous Italian poet and playwright, Gabriel D'Annunzio. She visited him twice at his villa on Lake Gerda, seeking to paint his portrait. He in turn was set on seduction. After her unsuccessful attempt to secure the commission, she went away angry, while D'Annunzio also remained unsatisfied. In 1927 Lempica won her first major award, the first prize at the Exposition Internationale des Beaux Arts in Bordeaux, France, for her portrait of Cosette on the balcony. In 1929 another portrait of Cosette, at her first communion, won a bronze medal at the International Exposition in Poznan, Poland. In 1928, she was divorced from Tadeusz Zimpicki. The same year she met Raoul Kufne, a baron of the former Austro-Hungarian Empire and art collector. His title was not an ancient one. His family had been granted the title by the last Austro-Hungarian Emperor, Franz Joseph I, because Kufner's family had been the supplier of beef and beer to the imperial court. He owned considerable properties in Eastern Europe. He commissioned her to paint his mistress, the Spanish dancer Nana de Herrera. Limpica finished the portrait, which was not very flattering to the de Herrera, and took the place of de Herrera as the mistress of the Baron. She bought an apartment on Rue Machin in Paris, and had it decorated by the modernist architect Robert Mallet Stevens. In 1929, Limpica painted one of her best-known works, Autoportrait, Tomara in a green Bugatti, for the cover of the German fashion magazine Die Dame. This showed her at the wheel of a Bugatti racing car, wearing a leather helmet and gloves and wrapped in a grey scarf, a portrait of court beauty, independence, wealth and inaccessibility. In fact she did not own a Bugatti automobile, her own car was a small yellow Renault, which was stolen one night when she and her friends were celebrating at La Rotonde in Montpenis. She travelled to the United States for the first time in 1929 to paint a portrait of the fiancé of the American oilman Rufus D. Bush and to arrange a show of her work at the Carnegie Institute in Pittsburgh. The exposition was a success but the money she earned was lost when the bank she used collapsed following the stock market crash of 1929. The portrait of Joan Jeffrey, fiancé of Rufus D. Bush, was completed but put into storage following the couple's divorce in 1932. It was sold by Christie's in 2004 following the death of Joan, now Vanderpool. Limpica's career reached a peak during the 1930s. She painted portraits of King Alfonso Zia of Spain and Queen Elizabeth of Greece. Museums began to collect her works. In 1933 she traveled to Chicago where her pictures were shown alongside of those of Georgia O'Keeffe. Santiago Martinez Delgado and Willem de Kooning. Despite the Great Depression, she continued to receive commissions and showed her work at several Paris galleries. The wife of Baron Kufner died in 1933. Delim Picker married him on 3 February 1934 in Zurich. She was alarmed by the rise of the Nazis and persuaded her husband to sell most of his properties in Hungary and to move his fortune and his belongings to Switzerland, the United States and Mexico, 1939-1980. In the winter of 1939, following the outbreak of World War II, Limpica and her husband moved to the United States. They settled first in Los Angeles. The Paul Reinhard Gallery organized a show of her work, and they moved to Beverly Hills, settling into the former residence of the film director King Vida. Shows of her work were organized at the Julian Levy Gallery in New York, the Corvoisier Galleries in San Francisco, and the Milwaukee Institute of Art, but her shows did not have the success she hoped. Her daughter Cosette was able to escape from occupied France via Lisbon and join them in Los Angeles in 1941. Cosette married a Texas geologist, Harold Foxhall. In 1943, Baron Kufner and Olympica relocated to New York City. In the post-war years, she continued a frenetic social life, but she had fewer commissions for society portraits. Her art deco style looked anachronistic in the period of post-war modernism and abstract expressionism. She expanded her subject matter to include still lives, and in 1960 she began to paint abstract works and to use a palette knife instead of her smooth earlier brushwork. She sometimes reworked earlier pieces in her new style. The crisp and direct amethyst, 1946, became the pink and fuzzy girl with guitar, 1963. She had a show at the Royal Volma Gallery in Paris in May and June 1961, but it did not repeat her earlier success. 
Baron Kufnir died of a heart attack on November 1961 on the ocean liner Liberten route to New York. Following his death, Limpica sold many of her possessions and made three around-the-world trips by ship. In 1963 Limpica moved to Houston, Texas to be with Cosette and her family. She retired as a professional artist. She continued to repaint her earlier works. She repainted her well-known auto-portrait, 1929, twice between 1974 and 1979. Auto-portrait I was sold, though she hung auto-portrait I in her retirement apartments, where it would remain until her death. The last work she painted was the fourth copy of her painting of Saint Anthony. In 1974 she decided to move to Cunavaca, Mexico. After the death of her husband in 1979, Kizet moved to Cunavaca to take care of Dilimpica, whose health was declining. Dilimpica died in her sleep on the 18th of March 1980. Following her wishes, her ashes were scattered over the volcano of Popocatepetl. Rediscovery, a resurgence of interest in Art Deco began in the late 1960s. A retrospective of her work was held at the Luxembourg Gallery in Paris in 1973, a few years before her death, and received positive reviews. After her death, her early Art Deco paintings were being shown and purchased once again. A stage play, Tomara, was inspired by her meeting with Gabriel D'Annunzio and was first staged in Toronto, it then ran in Los Angeles for 11 years, 1984-1995, at the VFW Post, making it the longest running play in Los Angeles, and some 240 actors were employed over the years. The play was also subsequently produced at the 7th Regiment Armory in New York City. In 2005, the actress and artist Cara Wilson performed Deco Diva, a one-woman stage play based on Limpica's life. Her life and her relationship with one of her models is fictionalized in Alice Avery's novel The Last Nude, which won the American Library Association Stonewall Book Awards Barbara Jitting's Literature Award for 2013. Style and Subjects the best description of Limpica's work was her own, I was the first woman to make clear paintings, she later told her daughter, and that was the origin of my success. Among a hundred canvases, mine were always recognizable. The galleries tended to show my pictures in the best rooms, because they attracted people. My work was clear and finished. I looked around me and could only see the total destruction of painting. The banality in which art had sunk gave me a feeling of disgust. I was searching for a craft that no longer existed, I worked quickly with a delicate brush, I was in search of technique, craft, simplicity and good taste. My goal, never copy, create a new style, with luminous and brilliant colors, rediscover the elegance of my models. She was one of the best known painters of the Art Deco style, a group which included Jean Dupas, Daigo Rivera, Josep Maria Serrat, Reginald Marsh, and Rocco Kent. But unlike these artists, who often paint in large murals with crowds of subjects, she focused almost exclusively on portraits. Her first teacher at the Academy Ranson in Paris was Maurice Dennis, who taught her according to his celebrated maxim, remember that a painting, before it is a war horse, a nude woman or some anecdote, is essentially a flat surface covered with colors assembled in a certain order. He was primarily a decorative artist who taught her the traditional craftsmanship of painting. Her other influential teacher was André Lhaut, who taught her to follow a softer, more refined form of cubism that did not shock the viewer or look out of place in a luxurious living room. Her cubism was far from that of Pablo Picasso or Georges Braque. For her, Pablo Picasso embodied the novelty of destruction. Limpicles combined this soft cubism with a neoclassical style, inspired largely by Ingers, particularly his famous Turkish bath, with its exaggerated nudes crowding the canvas. Her painting La Belle Raffaella was especially influenced by Ingers. Limpica's technique, following Ingers, was clean, precise, and elegant, but at the same time charged with sensuality and a suggestion of vice. The cubist elements of her paintings were usually in the background, behind the Ingresque figures. The smooth skin textures and equally smooth, luminous fabrics of the clothes were the dominant elements of her paintings. Known especially for her portraits of wealthy aristocrats, she also painted highly stylized nudes. The nudes are usually female, whether depicted alone or in groups. Adam and Eve, 1931, features one of her few male nudes. 
After the mid-1930s, when her Art Deco portraits had gone out of fashion, she turned to painting less frivolous subject matter in the same style. She painted a number of Madonna some urban women inspired by Renaissance paintings, as well as mournful subjects such as the Mother Superior, 1935, an image of a nun with a tear rolling down her cheek, and Escape, 1940, which depicts refugees. Of these, art historian Dills Nairit wrote, the Baroness's more virtuous subjects are, it must be said, lacking in conviction when compared with the sophisticated and gallant works on which her former glory had been founded. Limpica introduced elements of surrealism in paintings such as Surrealist Hand, see 1947, and in some of her still lifes, such as The Key, 1946. Between 1953 and the early 1960s, Limpica painted hard-edged abstractions that bear a stylistic similarity to the purism of the 1920s. Her last works, painted in warm tones with a palette knife, have usually been considered her least successful. Personal life, she placed high value on working to produce her own fortune, famously saying there are no miracles, there is only what you make. D. Limpica took this personal success and created a hedonistic lifestyle for herself, accompanied by intense love affairs within high society. Famous for her libido, Limpica was bisexual. Her affairs with both men and women were conducted in ways that were considered scandalous at the time. She often used formal and narrative elements in her portraits, and her nude studies produced overpowering effects of desire and seduction. In the 1920s she became closely associated with lesbian and bisexual women in writing and artistic circles, such as Violet Trefusis, Vita Sackville West, and Colette. She also became involved with Susie Solider, a nightclub singer at the Boyd de Noot, whose portrait she later painted. Kizette rarely saw her mother, but was immortalized in her paintings. Limpico painted her only child repeatedly, leaving a striking portrait series, Kizette in Pink, 1926, Kizette on the Balcony, 1927, Kizette Sleeping, 1934, Portrait of Baroness Kizette, 1954-1955, etc. In other paintings, the women depicted tend to resemble Kizette. Legacy, American singer songwriter and actress Madonna is an admirer and collector of Limpica's work and has lent paintings to events and museums. Madonna has also featured Limpica's work in her music videos for Open Your Heart, 1987, Express Yourself, 1989, Vogue, 1990, and Round World Substitute for Love, 1998. She also used paintings by Olympica on the sets of her 1987 Who's That Girl and 1990 Blonde Ambition World Tours. Other notable Olympica collectors include actor Jack Nicholson and singer-actress Barbara Streisand. Robert Dasnowski's book Telegrams from the Metropole, selected poems 1980-1998 includes the poems to Mara di Olympica and La Donna di Oro dedicated to Cosette di Olympica. On 16 May 2018, in celebration of what would have been her 120th birthday, Google honored her with a Google Doodle. Please subscribe Wiki Audio YouTube page below, and click notification icon to get future videos. Check out channel page to get more videos.